Is tall fescue actually the best type of cool season grass? Today I'm going to tell you why that may or may not be the case. We're getting to the part of the season where us cool season folks are about ready to figure out what we're doing with our fall what we're doing for renovations, if anything, how we're gonna get the lawn back in shape and all those things. So a lot of people have been asking me recently about tall fescue and maybe if it's a good idea to switch to that or mix some in in your bluegrass lawn. And I found a couple interesting things recently, uh, knowing that my yard is dormant right now, and I kind of explained that in a previous video, but there's been a couple of interesting things that have happened because of that, so I wanna kinda of go over that a little bit today and show you a little bit more about tall fescue. Maybe give you some ideas on why you might wanna use it and why you might not. So behind me here you'll see my uh, mainly bluegrass yard and there's a couple areas that I kind of want to target here to show you. Okay so you can see here that everything is really really dry. I saw yesterday on the weather here locally that we've had about three tenths of an inch of rain for the entire month of July. So definitely not too much especially after what happened in June where we had an overabundance of rain. Okay now if you'll see this distinct line here where my property ends and where the neighbor's property starts there, you notice that there's quite a bit of green stuff in there. Now there's a lot of brown stuff mixed in as well, but you'll notice that overall from a distance view it looks like it's pretty green. Now why is that the case? Well that stuff right there that's sticking up is tall fescue. Right here in amongst this brown stuff here in my yard there's a spot of tall fescue as well. And then as we move over to another section this is kind of the uh, sloping area of my yard. You'll see here a bunch more tall fescue it all looks pretty green and much much better than the areas around it then look at this crazy color right here this is my little side yard by the garden all bluegrass pretty much completely toasted and dormant now I'm not sure how much of this is actually going to come back I haven't watered it at all because I was doing a little test spot here to see the resiliency knowing that I'm going to be fixing this area but you see these little spots in here I'll try to zoom in a little bit so everything that's actually green in here, you'll see those little spots again. That's all tall fescue. So a little context for you, all of those areas have been watered about two weeks ago or so. That's it, and only about a quarter of an inch of water at that point. All those areas, exactly the same, but all the brown is Kentucky bluegrass because it needs a lot more water, and the tall fescue actually looks pretty good. So if I had a complete yard of that right now, maybe close up it wouldn't look the best. It might be a little bit brown, but from a distance, it would be much, much greener than what I'm dealing with right now. So the other thing you might be asking yourself is, Ryan, I thought you had a Kentucky bluegrass yard. What's all this fescue doing mixed in there? Uh, well, I've told this story a couple times, but I'll tell it again really quickly here. Uh, probably the first or second year after I completed my bluegrass renovation, I had a company come in and aerate my yard. They asked me at that time, they are like, hey, do you want to do some overseeding? We usually just do aeration and then overseeding at the same time. And I thought, I don't care at all, that should be fine. But come to find out the next year after, I noticed a lot of tall fescue coming into my yard and I thought, how the heck did this happen? Well, they actually overseeded with tall fescue seed. Now a lot of it didn't take off because I already had a pretty thick yard at that point. But there is some mixed in now and what I don't like about it is that it starts to clump into those little spots instead of being mixed out. And that's the reason why I'm trying to personally get rid of it in my yard. So I'm sure that most of you are like, you're talking about tall fescue as being a good thing right now and all this dormancy, but you're trying to get rid of it in some of your other videos. That's right, just because it doesn't really mix in very well with what I have going on. So what does that mean for you if you're trying to decide on whether to mix in some fescue this year in your yard or maybe do a renovation with some fescue? But I hope also someone can comment down below that has a mix of bluegrass and fescue to together and maybe you can kind of comment on what you think of it, what it looks like together. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the wide bladed look with the bluegrass, but maybe there's some types of it that you don't really notice as much. Mine seems to be a little bit more wide in general, so that's kind of why it throws off the look a little bit. What are some of the pros then of maybe using some fescue? Well, as we can see here in our yard today, 
it's a little bit more drought resistant, actually probably a lot more drought resistant than the bluegrass that I'm dealing with. Now bluegrass is great looking in the, in the spring and the fall. It can be okay in the summer too if you can keep up the watering, but it's really difficult when it's getting 90 to 100 degrees, then it kind of just does not want to do a whole lot in the summer anyway. So that's one thing to consider. So drought resistance would be number one. That's a really good thing with tall fescue. If you're looking to mow your lawn tall, tall fescue, obviously right in the name, is also a very good option for you because it's going to do really well at the taller heights. It doesn't do so great at the lower cuts. So actually though, that area that I showed you by my wife's garden, the really, really brown stuff with a couple of clumps of fescue mixed in. I was cutting that at about an inch and a half down to about an inch and a quarter earlier this uh, spring and so the fescue still survived that. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what height I would have to go to in order to get rid of it completely but we're probably going to find out this fall when I move the height down a little bit more. But if you're looking for a tall cut yard, you really like that look, or just like the less maintenance of it, then fescue's gonna be a great option for you. It also stands up to foot traffic. I feel personally a little bit better than bluegrass does when you're mowing it tall. Another good thing is that it has a really nice dark green color for most of the newer varieties. Some of the older fescues, they really weren't that great looking, but now that they've kind of improved things, you're gonna be wanting to look for a turf type tall fescue. There's some old stuff that's just kind of general fescue, but most of these newer ones are are much darker green color. Actually, I've found in some cases they look quite a bit darker than the bluegrass that I have. And I don't have the darkest kinds of bluegrass, but in general, the newer types of fescue are gonna look really great as well, give you really deep color. Okay, we talked about the positives. Now, what are some of the cons maybe to tall fescue? I'd say probably the main one that most people think of when comparing it to something like bluegrass would just be the fact that it's not really a spreading type grass. Let's say you found a spot of your bluegrass where there's like a baseball size hole or something. Something killed it off, something got dug up there, whatever happens. And you can just actually let that go, fertilize well, keep up with all your normal things that you're gonna be doing in your yard as far as maintenance practices. But that bluegrass will completely fill itself in. I had some grub damage a couple years ago that created some decent sized spots. I've seen those fill in in the matter of a couple of months. That's about the fall time when the grass is really spreading very well anyway, but that's one of the main things that would be the difference. So just know that if you're going to have fescue, that there's a possibility it could thin out over time, you could have some disease problems, and then you're gonna have to overseed and do that process, which really isn't that bad. But just keep in mind, it's a little bit more maintenance that way. However, probably less maintenance as far as watering and really taking care of bluegrass, which does take a decent amount of maintenance to keep it looking great. And speaking of disease, brown patch is particularly a problem sometimes with fescue. So you just have to watch that and make sure you're using some fungicides. I don't know if it's more or less a problem with fungus than it is for bluegrass. There's certainly plenty of fungus problems that can come with bluegrass as well. However, in my backyard, I haven't really used too many fungicides over the years with my bluegrass and it tends to be okay for the most part. Now, brown patch can be a big problem for fescue as far as I've seen. So if you do have fescue down in the comments, leave us some more info maybe on what you've been dealing with with fungus and things like that this year. Overall, just know that you might have a little bit more preventative things that you need to do for fungus with tall fescue. Then finally, as I touched on just a little bit, if you're going for a short cut look like I'm doing on my front yard and side yard, then fescue really isn't going to be the greatest option for that and really in general it's not an option at all. So some people asked me when I decided on my seed for my renovation project why I wasn't using fescue. That's the reason is because I'm going for a specific look over there using my real mower. Otherwise if I were redoing my complete backyard right now I would probably say I would consider fescue or maybe some kind of mix. But for right now I'm dealing with my bluegrass. I don't plan on getting rid of it at this point. There's some things that hopefully I can do next year, maybe with an irrigation system or more general things there that I can actually make my bluegrass at least survive through the summer part of the year. So we'll see what happens with that. Well, I hope that gave you some information on tall fescue. I've just been receiving so many questions that I felt like it was a good time to kind of address some of those things. And again, if you do have fescue, please leave us some comments below your experience with it, what you like, what you dislike. And I thank you guys for watching this one. We'll see you next time.